Hey guys, today we're going into Karen's home to talk to Karen Boulay about how to get that gritty primitive style. So she's going to talk about walls and window treatments and different kinds of things, flooring, and you're going to learn a lot. I know I did. We are here today with the lovely Karen from Primitive Times. Thank you. <laughs> and we are at your beautiful house and it looks so gorgeous for Christmas. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having us here, Karen. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. <laughs> Thank you for joining Ann and I today. You're in my very primitive home. It's the old Hillsville School, number seven in Spencer, Massachusetts. And it's circa 1871. It was an old two-room schoolhouse. So I hope you all enjoy your walk through the house. Right now we're in the sitting room. Um, it's where we spend most of our time, my husband, myself, and our dog, Ava. Uh, we relax here, we watch TV in here. Yes, there is a TV in this room. <laughs> you can guess where it might be. I'm sure you all guess, but it's in here. I like to hide everything. But this is the sitting room. The next room you look into is just an extension of our sitting room. It's a room where I end up liking to go to do my rug cooking, to do some stitching, to do some reading. I'll sit down at that end of the room, kind of away from the TV set. But this is kind of the, the hub of the house, so to speak, as small as the room is. And hopefully, as you look around, you'll maybe get some decorating ideas for your old home, new home, or in homes in between. It doesn't have to be old to get it to look primitive and very old-fashioned. Okay, Karen. Um, so many of my viewers want to know how to get that really authentic primitive look. And um, I want to know how to get the authentic primitive look. So how do we do that? You have obviously totally, I mean, this home was built in what, 18? 1871. It was a two-room schoolhouse. Okay, right. So it's not like it's a 1600s house, but you would never know that when you walk right into your room. I feel like I've gone to the 1600s. So how did you do it? Well, the first thing that I, I do a lot of design consulting through the shop. The first thing I'll tell clients, you get your wall coloring, your woodwork, and your window treatments. If you start with the correct colors, and there's a lot of primitive colors out there, there's a lot of colors that could be in the primitive category, and the paint manufacturers just haven't gotten them into that point yet, but you get those colors done. You work with that, and you find that many times a lot of things you already have, you thought you'd have to get rid of, all of a sudden are going to blend in very, very well. But those are the first three things to work with, and then the rest will start to fall into place. I also tell people, take furniture you have, don't be afraid to paint it. Mm -hmm. Painting is a very inexpensive way to totally change the look of something. And you can take something very ornate, you can paint it, make it look primitive, and then with your decorative pieces that you put on, you're tricking the eye. The eye is not looking at maybe a very decorative, ornate piece that might have been on a very Victorian piece you've now painted, say, a sage green, but it's looking at maybe the old pewter pieces or the old wooden bowl that you have put on top with the make-do candle holder next to it. Wow. So let's go to the primitive colors. What are they? Well... I, my take in on it is there's a lot of very simple colors, sage greens, okra, mushroom colors, uh, actually a pumpkin. Okay. If pumpkin is darkened enough, it can be a beautiful primitive color, various browns, various earth tones. And the nice thing about the primitive colors, they all blend together from one room to another. Mm -hmm. But if you stick with those colors, and the best way to do it is to go to the paint store. You get your color swatches and the strip. Mm -hmm. You get all of those strips that have colors that you think you're going to like. You take them home. You cut that strip off of the color you want to put on your walls and your woodwork. When you find some colors together, they take on undertones. Mm -hmm. Browns can turn little reds. Earth to, um, earthy colors like the off-whites can bring out yellows, you'll see that immediately, where you won't see it in a paint store. Hmm. So you just bring those, get all of your colors that you like, then go back and just have at it and start painting. There's different aging techniques. Once you've painted cupboards, you can re-wax them. Re-wax is just a, a dark color wax that you just put on 
sparingly across your cupboards and it gives them an aged look. You can do faux glazing on the walls, which is the most inexpensive way to make a wall look old. Mm -hmm. You can paint ceilings. Mm -hmm. Painting ceilings takes longer because you're up on a ladder and it's strained on the neck. But it can be done. It can be done very easy, very, very inexpensive. And you can also take um, staining. Wipe stain on a wall with a cotton cloth, immediately wipe it off again. And then you just get that little bit of stain that's left on the wall, and that also gives the walls a very aged look. And you could do both those processes over stenciling. If you like to put stenciling on your walls, your aging is the final process that you put on. And it gives it that old, subtle, aged look that people really like. So did and you glaze? In this yes, room? these rooms are glazed. Mm -hmm. These were originally when I did this room when I first bought the house. I did this room in what was called a linen color, and it was from paint I bought from the Sarah, which was a phenomenal primitive shop in Sturbergs. Alex, Alex Pfeiffer was Sarah before Sarah uh, primitive was even a word, and I bought all my paints from her. And my woodwork was also linen. And over the years, I just wanted to do a change, so I went into the um, sage green tones, but I kept the same glazing on the walls because I liked the effect of it. Mm. And it's just very simple glazing. You don't have to do it all in one day if you start the project. In between work and the kids and running errands, you can't get to it for three weeks. It doesn't compromise the effect of the glaze on the wall. Same thing with stenciling. Wow. But both are very inexpensive ways to make the walls and the rooms look mm -hmm. very old and very time period. And ah. just take your time picking out your paint. Don't make a rash decision. Also, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, yeah. If you look at your paint colors in your home yeah. at night, during the day, on a sunny day, on a dreary day, it takes on different colors. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that the lighting in your home is entirely different from the lighting in the paint store you just came from. Mm -hmm. So take your time picking out the paint colors. Don't make a rash decision. Get the swatches today and go buy the paint before it closes today. Mm -hmm. Take a couple of weeks to see it in different light elements and it makes a huge difference. And you'll see immediately what I'm talking about when you do that. And then you're not going to waste a lot of money on paint colors right. that you thought you were going to love when you saw them in the store and you got them home and they just did not work for you for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. good so that's tip. a very, very yeah. good little tip. You just need to have some patience, right. which a lot of us don't have. <laughs> Like myself, when I started, I want to get done, I want to get done today. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's right. You can just have some patience with it and just work with it. And it'll all come together for you very easily, and you'll love it when it's all done. Wow. How about the floors? Are these original floors? These or? floors are original. Okay. I wow. stained these floors once. Mm. When my daughter got married, I was having a personal bridal shower for her here. And I get down on my hands and knees, and I stained the floor. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's going to look good for her bridal shower. Well, it was very hot, very sticky, took forever to dry. I think the day we had the bridal shower here might have still been a little bit tacky, but we got through it. <laughs> but I said to myself, I'm not doing this again because I want the original floors. So since then and over the years, it's just worn back to all the original floors from when this was a schoolhouse. Wow. And I think it adds a lot to the age of the house, and also to that primitive, very old-fashioned look that I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really does. Show us where you hid the TV, Karen. Right there. <laughs> right there. That's, That's actually brilliant. Um, a single settle um, that I had made. Um, we have since had them made in the shop for customers. And the nice thing about it is that it's made according to the specs of your television. There's a make do door that's not on that one that we have put on when we started making them here on the either the left or right depending on where your wires are and there's also a door in the back that unlatches so you don't have to be a contortionist to hook up the television underneath you can have that configured to whatever you want i have the dvd and the cd player in there but you could configure that to anything the door opens and these are designed with a lip that goes all around it. So when you close this, it's 
a usable, serviceable piece of furniture. The kids come running in, jump up on it. You don't have to say, don't lean on that. My TV's there. The lip is in there that eliminates the door getting anywhere near the television. Mm. So it serves dual purpose, and it's also, it's not a wide piece. So a lot of people like that because they can angle it. Yeah. And it, it doesn't come way out into the room. So it's it's been a very popular item, uh, and it's something very different. Mm -hmm. I bought a television in. Yeah, that's 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 brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> well, I have to give credit. I have a very good friend of mine. Um, he and his wife had had a shop for many years, and he made that for us, and we bought that for him many years ago. Mm -hmm. And we've been having a, a – we tweaked a little bit, and we've been doing some um, for customers after he stopped having his business and they like it because it is something different and it is a serviceable piece of furniture you need a couple extra seats for someone to sit you've got them right there yeah it's just a tv is behind it and you close the door that's true you got a seat there that's yeah. crazy wow okay and speaking of chairs so we have your wing back kind of chairs mm -hmm. here and kind of a camel back kind of chair here uh -huh. and over there is a make do right. sort of it's almost a make-do, make-do. Yeah, and it's got the draw in. It's got the wooden arms on this one. I, I don't like that matchy-matchy look, and I think you don't want that in primitive. You want everything to look a little bit different. Yeah. So I've tried that uh, in furniture placement and um, the decorative pieces and the accessories. And this is just um, a writing chair. Wow. You would have sat there with the larger arm on this side where you would have sat if you were writing with your tablet, you were writing in your journal. Back in the day when the kids were doing that, they would have sat in chairs like that. And then the drawer, I'm guessing because of the use typically for a chair like that, they could have put their tablets or their books into the drawer and just put everything away when they were through That's really using neat. that chair. That is really neat. Wow. And then my husband has his recliner, which yeah. is so not primitive, but <laughs> you want a recliner so bad. <laughs> and it fits in. I was able to talk him into going with I was very tactful in the furniture store. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say I don't want any of this ugly stuff. <laughs> no, no. no, I was very careful. You know, it was, it was going to be his chair and he was paying for it, but I was very careful as to how I worded things. You know, <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want World War Three in the middle of the furniture store. So just, it worked. It worked. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, great. Okay, and then you have beams. Uh, were those those beams look like they were put in later, right? Two of the beams were here when I purchased the house. Okay. One beam at the stairway is original to the home. There's also a beam in the dining room, which is original to the home. And I think they are just, they're absolutely stunning. Yeah. They add so much to the home. And I just wouldn't want to take them down. Um, for all I know, maybe there was a reason that they need to be up there for stability. Well, that's true. To me, it was all about the looks. <laughs> Nobody's touching it. Right, right. <laughs> you know, if, it's stable, if it stabilizes things, okay, that's just a plus for me. <laughs> right. And now tell us about also the window treatments. The window treatments are very plain. They're very simple. Mm -hmm. I do a lot with cheesecloth. All of my curtains are all handmade, a lot of them handmade locally because I've sold a lot of them in my own shop next door. And you just keep it very simple. Um, there are sometimes on the windows I don't even put a curtain on, especially I'll tend to take them down in the spring or summer. Mm -hmm. And it looks just as nice in an older home. Mm -hmm. I can do that because my home is set way back off the road. Right. People who have old period homes, Back in the day, they were set and built right on the road. Right. Then they need more of a coverage. So what I suggest is, in addition to the window treatment, is the shutters, as you'll see at all of these windows, mm -hmm. because they can close the shutters. They can do half shutters like these. They can do a full shutter, whatever is best for their particular needs, but it gives them that privacy at night if the house is very close to the road. Right. And it also blends in beautifully right. if they're working into a very primitive, old-fashioned home. Yeah, yeah. Very good, yeah. I do the same thing. I take it off in the summer. I like having no window. You know, and then when I put it up in the fall, it's cozy. It, right. Right. And taking the curtains down just gives it a very different look. Yeah. It doesn't, I think, more so in the primitive home, you don't feel 
like it's unfinished. Right. Because you didn't put curtains up. Yeah. It it goes. Yeah. It and does. it blends beautifully. It does. And if it, sometimes I'll just drape garlands of mm -hmm. dried nuts or just draw garlands of dried herb bundles oh, yeah. across the window. Yeah. Just so you look at it and you think there's a little something there when you took the curtains down, but you mm -hmm. really don't even have to do that. Yeah. It's one of the nice things about primitive. There's a lot of things that go and you do a lot with the make do's. Yeah. And yeah. it also works very well. Make do is a wonderful word, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It is. It certainly is. <laughs> Wow, wasn't that great? Tomorrow we're going into her sitting room area. I love that area, that area is so cool. And you guys are really gonna learn a lot from that too. So make sure you tune in tomorrow.